So the number one reason I hear from people why they won't buy a neat new tool, something they're excited about, is because it's on the wrong battery platform and they're already invested into one. What about if I told you guys you can convert for next to nothing your batteries from your Harbor Freight stuff to DeWalt, from DeWalt to Milwaukee, from Milwaukee to Makita or anything and have batteries that charge on those platforms and you can use them with those platforms indefinitely. It's pretty easy, let me show you. Inside there's two different sizes of cells. There's gonna be the 18650s and the 21700s. 21700s are the new, the new bad boy on the block and they're amazing. You know, they're just slightly bigger. They're what Tesla's running and all the EVs are going towards because they just put out so much more power and just a little bit bigger size. But the 18650s still rock and we can convert those into, we can just take them out of, you know, this was actually out of a Milwaukee pack. And in today's video, we're going to put them, and not just one, we're going to take two of the uh, these Milwaukee packs and put them into a huge Makita that I can utilize. Now, before I move forward, I will touch base on the adapters you can buy and I have a whole video on these adapters and they work fantastic, but they won't have one huge drawback. You know, I use this Makita right here with this large Milwaukee battery all the time is not the weight that they stick out because you don't even feel it. And I actually think it balances a lot of tools, not a drill, but a lot of other power tools, sawzalls and stuff. I think it balances them a lot better, but you cannot charge. I have to keep around the Milwaukee charger because you cannot charge through these adapters. So off to the internet and for around 15 bucks, I picked up a 21700 cell double row Makita battery pack with circuit board, everything I need to do. All I got to do is take cells and insert it. This is this does two things. One, I can utilize these single row that are really only good for drills and stuff like that. Milwaukee's that I no longer use, but I also can take two of those and I'm going to take two of these packs and combine them into one into here and have a super pack. Uh, a very impressive battery pack that will deliver tons of amps and make your tools work a lot better. You will need some they're slightly specialty tools. They're just Torx bits and you want them a little bit longer because a lot of battery packs, you need to reach around. They need to reach up in stuff. You can't just have a little teeny bit, but they're security bits. So they just have a hole in the center. There's the top of our, our Milwaukee going away. See you later. And we pop it out. There's our 21700 cells, little silicone, just rubber bumper. And now I just need to take essentially these tabs off of here. This is 18 slash 20 volts. 18 and 20 volts are the exact same. It's just marketing. I desoldered them, but I could have just cut them. And then my main positive was just tack welded on. And I just popped that off and same with my negative. So now my board is loose and I can actually pull my tabs off. I do want to be careful because if I touch this to this, it's like me touching both sides of the battery. And these have enough energy to give you good excitement. They have an ex enough energy to weld, essentially. And though it sounds fun, it's not fun. I'm trying to do as little um, soldering and manipulation of these packs as possible. Where you could just pull all these tabs off and pull out the seal cells individually. And then put it together. And I have videos on doing that. On this one, I'm trying to just to keep them in a one big old lump together without doing much work. And then we can put them together. There we go. Here I'm actually stacking two different packs. And so I also wanna make sure that my voltage on these packs is charged almost the same, as close as possible. Because once I connect this pack to this pack, these two batteries are going to be touching negative, negative, positive, positive. They're always gonna share a load, but once I connect them, if this one's fully charged and that one's not charged at all, this pack, this battery, this cell, just by itself, is going to charge this cell, and it's gonna dump a ton of amps and you could overheat it. So I wanna get them as close as possible. They're, I think these are 3.7 volts or 3.71, and these are like 3.75. They're really freaking close. So just double check, there's my negative. So my pack is going to go like this, in the setup in here obviously they want you to take each cell in and out one at a time you know they want you to build a new battery pack and you can build new battery packs you want you can buy cells but you'll find out that cells cost just as much as a battery pack by itself so the cheapest way to get cells 
is out of an existing battery pack. I only had to cut out a couple of the little tabs because you can see, like if we start on this end, you know, I don't have to cut out a tab between there and there. I just have to get these to fish through and they're still supported almost on every single side. Get it in there, pop them in there, just like butter. And then we'll get the other, and then I'll just slide this one in as well and get it done. There we go. So yes, this one can touch down there. They're going to be cells in parallel. So you have five cells in series and two cells in parallel. So this would be a uh, 2P 5S, 5S 2P, whatever. And now I'm going to slide the other side on and it's going to hold all my cells so they're not going to touch each other. And like I said, you can cut this all apart and just do individual cells. Now all I have to do is actually bring this down. Um, I'll trim off this whole bottom thing. We'll solder this tab to that. This one to this, this one to this, this one to this, this one to this. And then all these battery kits, if you get them with the circuit boards and stuff like that, they come with new tabs. And we'll just cut off what we need to come up to the circuit board and we'll just solder a piece somewhere down onto this tab. And we're actually never actually soldering on the battery because people get really nervous that you can about soldering on the battery, but I do it all the time. Um, you just gotta know what you're doing, you gotta be quick. You don't want a lot of solder because you won't be able to close up the case. So, I'm not trying to do a blob of solder. See it melt, hold it, do a little bit more. Hold it. It doesn't look good now i can add a little bit of solder on top but that should be good and now our pack is fully like all the cells are touching each other sometimes you can't get the solder to flow solder is what actually carries the heat through the piece so it creates a bigger surface area for it to touch there it goes your balance leads do not handle that much current but your positive and negative do actually did not come with wire so I had to just go grab a couple little small things of wire. This is just your level indicator. Well, let's see. What does it say? Yeah. Does it fit? That is always the question. And I might have to pry a little bit. They make it nice and snug. And I would say that is a fit. There's a spring for the top of our release. And just put that over. Put our four screws in. Put the sticker on. And we can try it out. Just put the little four screws right in there. So I guess one of the first things, let's pop over to the Makita charger. See what it thinks about it. It likes it. So I have two identical angle grinders here, both Makitas, and I have a OEM Makita battery right here, five amp hour. I'm gonna take the one I made and run it against it, and we're gonna use the this brand new Top Dawn um, thermal imaging camera to show you how much heat the tool doesn't take on with higher packs. And one of the reasons why is people don't understand this is it's not really the six amp hour, five amp hour, four amp hour. That doesn't matter. What matters is these cells in here are Samsung. Um, 25 hours. So the the cells in here, there's two different rows can put out 20 amps. So I have two rows, so I can actually put out 40 amps at roughly 18 volts. So that's what this can do. These cells can put out 70 amps at 18 volts. Nearly twice the amperage can come out of here versus here. And so what that does is you're going to have voltage drop. You know. This might, you know, you might be running this one and it's gonna be dropping down to like 16 volts or something under heavy load. 
where this one's gonna stay up there right at 18 volt. The tool's gonna spin faster. It's going to create less heat in it and it's gonna last longer. Um, building your own packs, this pack is way better than the best pack Makita offers. It just is. I mean, even this, I built this pack forever ago out of some old Porter cable and I run this in the Makitas all the time. And the, this only had 15 amp, but I did four rows so I can put out 60 amps versus, you know, 40 amps. So even this cheaper pack with cheap batteries puts out more amperage and makes these run way better than they do with the stock Makita batteries. So much so that these are just four and a half, five inch angle grinders. Is one of them I almost always have dedicated. I welded up my own guard. I run a seven inch grinder disc on this grinder all the time and it doesn't stall out because I get, but I can't do it with a stock battery. But with this, I can. So let's do some thermal imaging just to show you more or less just to play with this and show you guys kind of some heat input and we'll see how hot the tool gets. You can actually watch it. I'm gonna do it right here, grinding through some quarter and steel. Got brand new blades, same brand blades, everything in them. Um, on the left hand side, I'll use the new battery. On the right hand side, I'll use the original Makita. It's full, this one's full. Okay, the thermal imaging didn't work exactly the way I, I wanted because I can't hold on to this one. This one's probably about 50%, 25-50% more powerful than this one. So the same Makita grinder with just a more battery power just is that much more powerful. It really is. I can't even explain it. Um, same thing if I would have put this one on there. It's just so much more powerful. I can't even hold on to it one-handed. I tried moving over to my right hand since I'm right-handed and I still couldn't, it kept, it's, it was just cutting faster. Um, this is an amazing tool with the Makita batteries. It is a phenomenal tool with, you know, high performance batteries. It really is. So I'll put a link below to that, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Build yourself some high performance batteries, change brands, doesn't matter. That's kind of what this is about. People always saying they can't change brands, you know, they're locked into a Craftsman or they're locked into, you know, all these Hercules or Bauer batteries from Harbor Freight and they want DeWalt or they want Milwaukee. Okay, I'm gonna play fetch. Look, I just barely got back in the truck. Look how hot it is. It's pitch black outside. Okay, let's do this. Can't even see it. Okay, ready?